Right, last clip of the game before I roll the credits, and this is gonna be a pretty long clip. Ugh. Still find it funny that we can't have a match with 30 people when most rumbles were a 30-man deal. Now, let's do this in a rumble arena, even if some of the others that are available look pretty nice. Yeah. Let's keep it as close to actual rumble rules as this game can pull off. It's actually possible in this game to start a match and forget to give an end condition. Okay. Apparently any belt that we manage to earn in the belt mode is possible to make the prize of this match. I'm not too inclined to do that for this one, but it's interesting to know that's possible. It's also interesting to note that absolutely everyone is available for the Rumble, whereas other wrestling games would prevent women from being involved at all. I somehow doubt that we're going to get from the start of the f to the finish with uh, Austin, but hey, it'll be interesting to see how far we can get with him before we're given another character along the way. At the very least, it didn't take me long to cause the first elimination, and it didn't take long for another megastar to come into the ring. In actually planned rumbles, there's typically a section around the beginning or middle where they're just throwing bodies in there without giving a damn, since none of them matter in the long run of the rumble. Uh, but since I set the order to random to save myself some time, that means absolutely everyone and anyone in this game could come out next. Even the characters I haven't actually unlocked yet. I'm not too sure if it's a programming error or not, but it certainly makes the rumbles in this game an interesting kind of unpredictable. Of course, the fact that we ended up tossing the rock out like he was some low-grade punk when he only just entered the ring is something that no poker, even during his debut, would have pulled. Not sure why those two tried to run at us, I just found it chuckle-worthy that they knocked each other down when they wanted to stop fighting one another for a little bit. I'm pretty sure during one Royal Rumble that Austin eliminated China with a stiff-looking clothesline over the top rope. I can't really remember which one that was, though. Probably one of the ones that Austin ended up winning, though. Uh, 1997 or 98. Well, it certainly would make sense for people to gang up on us, since part of his persona was that he wasn't the friend-making type. He just came in, kicked a hell of a lot of ass, talked a lot of smack, and then left. Apparently, we can't just toss someone into the apron, we have to punch them there. Not a big deal, we've been eliminating people at a rate good enough to prevent this one match from being over half an hour long. Still kind of annoying, though. Went over due to a light punch, not even a heavy one. I don't think that had anything to do with how worn down the guy was. Good god. There's really not much reason to do a lot of scoop slams, power bombs, or stunners in this match. While I'm sure wearing someone down makes them less likely to defend themselves, you can eliminate someone regardless of if they're fresh or not in this game. On the one hand, that's good since we were the first man out. On the other, good god. 
it's very unlikely we're going to make it to the end with Austin since I'm not exactly an ace in this game. Sooner or later, someone is going to hit us the wrong way when we're near the ropes, and there's nothing we can do to prevent our fall if that happens. Come on, China. Haven't you smacked us around enough? Why not try to finish off Farouk? He's been in the ring since the start as well. Well, I'm sure that powerbomb is pretty unpleasant for Hardcore Holly there. Still, as long as you haven't been tossed out of the ring, you aren't, uh, out of the match. Oh, good God. Deborah's in the ring, and there's no way I can make Austin beat down on his wife at the, the time. Funny. Eesh. I'm just hoping we take her out of the match quick, so the awkwardness lasts as little time as possible. Or Austin could become the most hated person in the ring again and take another beat. Then China can start beating on Austin's wife because somehow it's less uncomfortable when a woman beats on another woman instead of a man beating on a woman. It's just strange how that works out. Eliminated. And here's someone we're not going to have any awkward feelings beating the crap out of. Though I'm pretty sure that Vince won a rumble immediately after the two that Austin won. And that was somehow less obnoxious than when he won the ECW Championship and tried to sound hip and cool. Oh yeah, you definitely know you're in the Attitude Era if you see Stone Cold Steve Austin giving Vince McMahon the Stone Cold Stunner. Though, I'm sorry to say that the way Vince McMahon sells the Stunner in this game is nowhere near the kind of funny as the way he did when it was live. I get that they could only afford to put one kind of animation for when you uh, take a given move in this game, but still, it was ridiculous that Austin specifically came up with that finisher because he thought anyone could take that bump, and there were a solid number of people, especially the McMahon family, who didn't know how to take the hit, regardless of how many times he did it to them. Oh, come on. We don't want him flat on the canvas, we want him out of the ring now, so we can get that number on the top to shrink a little more. Kidding me! Deborah eliminated China just as we were eliminating McMahon? And she was doing the suck it taunt from T Generation X to Austin! I'm sorry, I'm not really sure how to react to this. And here comes an actual member of T Generation X who should have the crotch job. And he shows up as our special war out while the ring refilled. The random number generator for this match certainly had fun at any rate. And I'm having fun watching it. And she's out of there. Now that we're down to the uh, number of participants usually that go through a rumble, let's see how much longer we can last with our first character. For a moment, I was about to call him Grandmaster Sexy. Uh, eh, that would have been a bit confusing. Sorry about that. If Val Venus gets into the ring next, I'm just gonna laugh. Oh, 
then I'm amazed he never became part of the Vince McMahon Kiss My Ass Club if he loves asses that much. And <laughs> great. I get eliminated by the man the instant I make that joke. I suppose I deserve that. Anyway, I've got no choice but to fight as Funaki until I end up eliminated again, assuming that happens. At least it wasn't any wrestlers I explicitly don't like, like Benoit. But it's still awkward to end up being someone I didn't really care for at the time. Not that Funaki was in any way a bad wrestler, or that Kai and Tai was a bad tag team back when they were in the Federation. Just that they faded into the background to me, and I'd be hard-pressed to remember anything specific about them considering everything else going on at the time. With the sheer number of wrestlers to try to keep track of in both the World Feder Wrestling Federation and World Championship Wrestling, I hope it's understandable that a good number fell between the cracks for me. Eh. I just checked Wikipedia to see what's going on with Funaki now, and apparently, he's one of the uh, commentators for the Japanese version of WWE, and an interpreter for any Japanese wrestlers in the WWE at this point. It's nice to know he's still got work and no major health concerns. Not a lot of people from the Attitude Era can say the same. I guess it helps when you don't have the main event spotlight on you, so uh, you don't feel pressured to either take steroids to get the kind of look that Vince McMahon really loves to push, or where you do something that leaves you physically mangled after you do it like poor Mick Foley. It is just downright obscene, the kind of attrition rate that pro wrestlers have. Eliminated! Well, we've got another DX member in the ring now. Not that Triple H is likely to help her win or something. Well, I guess we aren't taking her out of the ring as fast as some of the others. I'm sure that slap would have hurt if we landed it. Anyway, that's Cactus Jack out of the match. While I'm certainly eliminating more people than the AI is, it's nice to see we're not the only one knocking people down at, at all. Anyway, time for Jim Ross to get in on this match. I'm definitely going to feel guilty if I have to slap him around, especially considering some of the bullying he had to endure due to his boss for a damn long time in the company. And we've still got two members of TX in the ring at the moment, and good god, I wish that he changed his song after a number of years, because once you get to your 30s, you probably shouldn't be called the Heartbreak Kid anymore. Much less get into your 40s and continue and going into the ring with that song in your pack. Granted, he didn't stay active for quite as long as The Undertaker, or god forbid Ric Flair, but still... As skilled as he was in the ring, he really should have done more to change uh, things up to go along with his evolving attitude. Hell, in numerous interviews, he outright admits he was quite an asshole backstage before he left to have some back surgery. And I'm sure that in terms of what he said on the mic, and how he went through individual matches, evolved a bit as the years so went by, even if his moveset never really changed much. Uh, anyway... Let's leave one of the better rivalries of the Attitude Era to go at it while we eliminate uh, the other commentator in this ring. JR is putting up quite the fight considering he's not actually an athlete of any kind, as never has been. Darn, I was hoping that would send him through the ropes. Ah, well, it's not like we have some explicit limit to how long the match is going to be. There we go. And The Undertaker comes in to replace Jim Ross. Oh dear. So now I'm trying to remember if The Undertaker was in uh, the company for longer than JR. Both were uh, mainstays for quite a while, that's for sure. I'm starting to get the feeling that big wind-up slap isn't a good move. Probably because I keep missing with it. Yep, 
Yeah, definitely pretty damn ridiculous for Funaki to eliminate The Undertaker with such ease. But then The Rock was one of the first people eliminated in this match as a whole. Wow, it didn't even last long enough for his song to start playing in the background. Granted, I've seen other wrestlers over the years get eliminated even faster, like the Warlord and Santino Marilla, but still, that's got to be insulting. Not quite as fast for Taz, but he certainly didn't last long either. Guess I'm on a roll here. Not that the roll means much when the counter still says there's... 20 people left. Can't say I remember anything at all about Buchanan. Eh, again, he's one of those people that just faded into the background when things really got rolling back then. Looks like Triple H is getting ready to give Shawn Michaels another pedigree. Very much doubt that Michaels is going to last much longer in this match, though. I could be wrong. Yeah, very much doubt we're going to do any finishers with Funaki in this match, but considering the style of match, it's not like that's going to be a disadvantage for us. Hell, we had an annoying amount of trouble eliminating Vince McMahon after stunning him three times. And while it would be amusing to give Stephanie the stunner as well, it wouldn't be quite as cathartic. Sure, she's played a heel on screen for decades, and the whole Stephanie Triple H uh, China thing was an absolutely disgusting bit of bullshittery. But not a condemned someone uh, for this sort of thing uh, for life compared to Vince himself with all the sex scandals, the union busting, eliminating even the companies he was recruiting talent from, the fact that he gave wrestlers crap for trying to have a life outside of the ring, encouraged steroids use unofficially, since he kept pushing the muscle boys more frequently than anyone else whenever he could. Yeah, Vince is a lot easier to actually hate than anyone else in the McMahon family, no matter how they might have been portrayed on screen or what their politics might have been. I probably shouldn't be chuckling over the fact that Triple H just attacked his own mother-in-law. And apparently Sean felt the need to give her the finishing punch. Oh, son of a bitch! If we'd gotten to the end of the heavyweight championship defense run, then Vince would have sicked Andre the Giant at us there. A bit of an interesting decision to include him into this game, considering he was dead for years by the time this game was released. He's a hidden character that can be most easily unlocked by beating the hardest belt line in the game twice over. So I'm sure he was a surprise to a lot of people back in the day. Maybe it's just a case of the game designers figuring they'd already started working on the body type for the big show for this one before it turned out he wasn't going to be active at the time the game released. If you can't use the distinctively massive guy from the currently relevant time, then it's all well and good to use a similarly built guy that everyone with a passing knowledge of plural wrestling would know about even if he was before the audience's time. Uh, it's just such a shame that the best footage of Andre the Giant was at the tail end of his career, when he wasn't anywhere near as mobile as he was in his prime. Eh, Creighton, for a second I thought we were dealing with, uh, a repeat guy. No, no, Grandmaster Sexe and... Great. Those two are so freaking linked together that I call them both Grandmaster Sexy in my head. Eh, that is really not a great sign for either of them. And it's probably not a good sign that I missed that Triple H got eliminated before Shawn Michaels. And here comes X-Pac, the guy so infamously hated during his time in the ring that the term X-Pac Keith 
is a big thing. Not that he was the worst wrestler to ever step into the ring, just that he knew how to hit all the wrong buttons for the audience, especially since he refused to move away from the D-Generation X stuff for even a little while, and loved to be booked as near invincible when facing anyone who wasn't uh, an outright superstar. It's just an awkward thing where everyone else in the pretty infamous uh, clink at the time was a pretty damn impressive person in their own right. Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Kevin Nash, and Scott Hall were all good buddies of his. I'm sure seeing all of his friends get a hell of a lot of love from the crowd must have messed with his head at least a little, especially considering their attitudes back when the crew was fully together. It probably says something that I'm far more willing to take on Albert than Andre the Giant, even if they're both rather big guys and Albert had more on-screen acrobatics and fast-moving stuff than Andre has as far as I know. I can't even begin to say how wrong it feels to see X-Pac of all people slapping around Andre the Giant. You may as well have the Brooklyn Brawler doing that kind of damage. Is the Brawler even in this game? If they threw in the likes of Jim Ross and Linda McMahon, then it certainly wouldn't be out of place for a notorious jumper to show up as well. I'm sure you're gonna try to kick some ass here, D'Lo, but I'm sorry to say that I've been on a roll for a while now. And the end is certainly starting to feel near, even if we haven't quite gotten to the single digits just yet. Eliminated. For some reason, I keep expecting Shane McMahon to show up. Probably because the rest of his family has run into the ring this far into the clip. And she's another quick one to get eliminated by us. Things are certainly going to be winding down now that we've uh, got less than 10 people in the match to go through now. And it looks like uh, a very famous referee wants to get in on the action in a game that doesn't actually show referees officiating a match. You know, it would have been hilarious if he actually stood up and declared eliminated, considering some unseen referees are the ones supposed to declare someone out of a match. I suppose we'll just have to settle for eliminating McFoley once in a match eliminated. where uh, he's shown up twice so far. Then he comes out immediately after being eliminated with the same damn song in the background. I asked it before, but I'll ask it again. Why didn't Mankind get the Ode to Freud theme? That's right, Matt. Slap him around for taking out a legend like Andre the Giant when he's one of the most reviled superstars to ever step into the ring. I guess I had to take care of him myself. Well, Bradshaw certainly wanted to stay as separate from Farouk as he could around here, and I'm pretty sure that Bradshaw might have had at least considered bullying around Efunaki back in the day, though it's not like I heard of him being especially bullying towards anyone before his uh, gimmick change to JBL, so maybe I'm not giving him enough credit. Eliminated. Okay, so the final four are Funaki, Steven Richards, Mankind, and Matt Hardy. Half the people in here have some solid star power behind them. The other half are pretty forgotten for me, and we're part of the half that I don't remember so well. Right 
Wait, sorry Steve, but I'd rather win this match even if this isn't a character I would have uh, considered having a chance to actually win a rumble. Come on, guys. One of you has to leave the ring if we want to finish this match. And I really want to finish this match so I can say goodbye to this game. Definitely a very big pain in the ass to eliminate someone when there are three people in the ring. The mechanics around here just make it easier to pull that sort of thing off when there's an even number of people, not an odd number. As embarrassing as it is to take the mandible claw, at least it doesn't have that damn sock attached to it right now. And we don't have to worry about submitting in this match. And then there were two. And that does it. We are done with this match and with it the game. Okay, some premature celebrations on my part. Sorry about that. Well, I wasn't off by much. I hope this was an enjoyable LP to watch, even if I didn't go through all the belt lines from start to finish. I had fun going through it as much as I did, and I'm sure if I went any longer, I would have stopped having fun. Apparently, I was an equal opportunity eliminator here. Everybody was eliminated about as much. Diggity, 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 digg